this week's product review uh, is basically me shouting at the microphone so that you guys can actually hear me. Um, yeah, cool. Excellent. Hey y'all, so this week's product review is on the Bear 2020 Smokies. Bear says that these are the best precision trucks they've ever made. And with the Gen 6 cast truck maybe being the best cast truck on the market right now, uh, controversial opinion I know, but they're really good. Let's see how these hold up. Bit of a disclaimer, I am sponsored by Bear. I did get these trucks for free, but my review will be unbiased. First, let's look at the specifications of these trucks. So these trucks come in a fixed width of 120 millimeters. They come with a 50 degree base plate in front and a 20 degree base plate in the back. They're precision trucks. Uh, they cost about $400. In terms of bushings, they come stock with a 74A bushing in front and a 78A bushing on the bottom. And in the back, you have a 97A bushing at the bottom and a 95A bushing at the top. In terms of washers, you get a cup washer roadside and a cup washer board side stock. And then you get a cup washer board side and a small flat washer roadside stock. They also come with a 81A bushing and a half inch riser for the truck at the back. And yeah, that should really get you started rolling on these trucks. So let's start off with a bit of a summary. Are these trucks actually good? It might be a bit of a coincidence, but I've steadily become a much better rider whilst using these trucks. I've been able to take better race lines. I've been able to slow down easier on my wheels. I've just been able to achieve my dreams on a longboard, you know, do everything that I've ever wanted to do. Okay, that's a bit of cap, but they're just really good. And they're by far some of the best trucks that I've ever used. And I'm pretty happy with my set. Of course, not all things are black and white, you know. It does have one or two things that I can see other riders not liking about them. Namely, the fixed width of 120 millimeters and the use of a ultra high molecular weight insert as opposed to a urethane insert. Again, it's not black and white. Some people might like these things, some people might not like them, but overall as a truck, I'm pretty impressed and I'm pretty happy with them. Right, so before we get into the actual review, I briefly want to talk about a key to riding slalom trucks. So if you're going to buy these trucks or any other slalom downhill truck in the future, I advise you to have your front foot over the front trucks as much as possible and to really work your weight on the front truck here and have like maybe 70-80% of it most of the time. And this should really give you the best performance, best performance in terms of sliding, best performance in terms of stability. And yeah, whenever I've had like the foot stop like here and my foot at the back here or even slightly further back or I've been leaning back too much, it just sucks overall. Yeah, and this has been consistent also with the 2020 Rogues. Just work that front truck as much as possible and keep your front foot up there. Right, so first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to these trucks is how they turn. These are the quickest turning trucks that I've ever tried and that's been really great for taking race lines and just basically taking the best lines down the hill. And what this means when it comes to race lines is that I don't have to be really tidy and really perfect with my entry line. You have more options in terms of the lines you can take and how you can slightly adjust your line to really make the most out of your exit or your entry or whatever it is. Whilst with other trucks, once I was locked onto a line, that was it. I didn't have the option of changing things a little bit and if I did I'd probably wash out on the exit line or something bad would happen maybe at high side or whatever. Once I picked a line that was it but with these I can really just pretty much take any line that I want because they react to my input so quickly and that's been great because I have more choice when it comes to picking my entry lines and I have more choice when it comes to um, picking my exit lines as well. Of course, you are still limited by your own input. If you turn in too late or if you turn in too early, you are still going to uh, maybe wash out or whatever, or maybe not get into the apex as much as you want to. Also, you are limited by you know your body positioning and then things like the limits of grips of your wheel. And yeah, you don't have to be that aggressive with your input with these trucks. Like they can articulate deeply, even if you aren't that aggressive. That's both a good and a bad thing. It was really great for, for example, because I was able to turn on some corners without having to grab rail for extra leverage, as I've had to with other trucks. I was able to just work my front foot and get the truck to articulate as and turn as deeply as I wanted it to. However, it can be a bad thing, and here's why. Once you get off that center, uh, these trucks have a strong center. Once you get off that center, the trucks kind of want to articulate quickly and dive quickly. Of course, that dive is always controlled, but sometimes it can feel a bit sudden. And as you ride these trucks, you do get used to this, but I can see it being an issue for some riders. So yeah, once you come off that center, it can be a bit sudden, but yeah, you could always simply go for harder bushing so that you have a more slower turn. And 
another place that it could be a bad thing is in the road feedback and i go over this more in the road feedback section that's coming up right so the next thing i want to talk about is the ultra high molecular weight insert or the plastic insert that goes in these trucks and that's what really prevents slops and gives you a really direct feeling when you're turning and engaging the truck so with these things what i've really noticed is that they give you a solid center feel but no return to center when you're engaging the truck what that means is that when you're going on a straight line and you're not really engaging the truck to turn it either left or right it's going to keep on going straight and it's only really going to turn left or right when you actively engage it it really takes a lot of the work of keeping the truck stable away for you and makes it a little bit easier to ride but yeah when you do choose to engage the truck because this is plastic um, it feels like the hanger just glides over it and it really adds no return to center like it doesn't want to pull the hanger back to center or to the point where it's not being engaged no all the return to center is controlled and managed by the bushings at least that's how it feels on other trucks with insert bushings for example the 2020 rogues when you start to engage the truck it feels like you're pulling on the insert and it's pulling back at you and it wants to come back to a place where it's not engaged which is center so yeah so do the inserts wear quickly the answer is kind of yes kind of no in the front truck the insert does wear a bit faster however in the back truck it doesn't really wear that quick kind of stays the same but yeah you're looking about six to six months to a year to maybe replace these inserts but no they don't wear that fast and they kind of feel the same throughout the the use right so next thing that i want to look at is are these trucks stable the answer is absolutely yes i've taken these up to 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour with no issue i feel confident enough to take them up to 100 kilometers per hour with no issue 70 miles per hour maybe maybe not we'll see but yeah i can take them fast and they're pretty damn stable uh one thing that i have noticed is that they do reflect quite a bit of road vibration rather not reflect is that they do react to it a bit more than other trucks do and i think that's mainly because of the uhmw insert so because it has no return to center and when you go over a road imperfection for example a bump a pebble or something whatever it is in order for the hanger to return to center uh, which is after it reacts to the whatever it has to rely on the bushings the bushings do all the work to bring it back to center and yeah it can be a bit unnerving initially because the truck does feel like it twitches a bit more than for example the truck with a urethane insert because the urethane insert helps bring it back to center quicker but for the most part it is still quite stable and yeah i've gotten quite used to it but i can see it being maybe an issue for other riders or people who are just sort of getting to know these trucks or just starting out to use them you can't always use harder bushings or a cupped washer or whatever it is to kind of get a quicker return to center but yeah these trucks do remain stable but they do reflect no, they do react a bit more to road feedback than some other trucks that I have tried with urethane inserts. So, yeah. Right, next thing that I want to talk about is, do these trucks have a lot of grip? Do they slide well? All that good stuff. Yes, they do. They slide really well. They have enough grip, I guess. haven't really had a lot of problems riding these trucks, especially once they're dialed. They just feel very natural and I've really been enjoying them. And, yeah, that's it, I guess. Uh... Grip comes from your wheels, not from the trucks. These do go into the slide very smoothly and in a very controlled way. So playing with the limits of grip is always quite nice and sort of forgiving. And they don't really want a high side on you. So yeah, that's the that's the answer I have for that question, for that topic or whatever. Next question that I do have is, are these trucks hard to ride? No, they're not difficult to ride. They may take some adjustment, especially with the road feedback thing. But for the most part, they're not difficult to ride. I gave my board to my friend Blaze to have a corner session with. And yeah, that boy was shredding, like he was skating really well. I just had to tell him, yo, keep your weight there. Uh, don't do X, Y, Z. And it was pretty much good. He was shredding them as naturally as a longboarder can skate a longboard. But yeah, they're not difficult to ride in my opinion. Uh, they may take some adjusting too. And yeah, but are these trucks good for stand-up slides? I'd say yes, honestly, you can run pretty small freeride wheels on them and you won't get kingpin scrape much or at all. I didn't get any kingpin scrape when I ran like 65mm-ish wheels on these, so 
you can run free ride wheels, but they are great for stand-up slides. They have a really strong center, which I think is key for making a truck good for stand-up slides. And however, they may feel a bit tippy because with free ride wheels, these things are gonna truck really, really small, uh, really, really narrow rather. So they might not be the best option for that generally speaking, but they're pretty good for stand-up slides. If you do wanna, if you do wanna do stand-up slides on longboard race trucks. Right, so this next section is going to be on things that were annoying but that didn't actually affect my riding experience at all. First up, we have the high difference between the front and rear trucks. So these have a height difference of about 0 0.375 inches. They do come stock with a half inch riser. So if you do slap that on the back, they are about level, but they're going to be about a eighth of an inch higher. I do run mine with a combination of a quarter inch plus one eighth inch and that really levels them out and brings them to the same height and it's not really an issue to me to be honest because once i slapped them on i pretty much forgot about the height difference the only time i was reminded about it was when i was switching out the trucks which was maybe once a month or maybe once every couple of months so it's not an issue in my opinion you don't really think about it also it does mean that you can wedge and de-wedge the trucks without really increasing the overall height too much the diversity of slalom setups I uh, guess it might be a desirable feature. The 2018 Rogues also had this feature with the 15 degree plate being wedged up to 20, 23 degrees. And yeah, so cool. By the way, if you guys didn't know, the height difference is caused by the rear hanger. The rear hanger actually has the axles in line with the middle of the bushing seat. So it sits kind of lower than this one does. That's what causes the difference, not the actual base plate. You can run other <laughs> bare compatible trucks on this without really having a rear that's too huge but i don't know how important that will be for other people but it's something important for me i guess or something that i look forward to making the use of you can run your other bare hangers on this i do want to experiment with 130 millimeter hangers on this sort of similar setup and see how they feel so that's nice Another thing that I didn't like about these trucks is that sometimes some washers touch the hanger and this issue was only really apparent when I used a cupped washer in front. It was only an issue with the front truck by the way. When I used a cupped washer in front and when I used a flat washer, this one actually in front, it was not an issue when I would use it with a small flat washer. However, I have been using a flat washer full time and it hasn't affected my riding experience at all. It is an issue with the cupped washer, but I don't think a lot of people are going to be running a cupped washer in their front trucks. But yeah, if you do, when you compress the hanger, the sides of the washer touches the sides of the hanger. This is only really a big issue when you're standing still and trying to see the limits of articulation of your trucks so or trying to see if you can get bite. But when you're actually riding, it's not a problem at all. But yeah, this is another thing that I felt was annoying, but that didn't actually affect my riding experience. All right, so next I'm talking about things that I didn't like about the Bear Smokies. And the only thing that I really didn't like was the fixed axle width. So these have a fixed axle width of 120 millimeters, but I didn't like this because when I was running other wheels, I couldn't really adjust the length of the axle to accommodate a wider wheel or a narrow wheel. And yeah, it just felt kind of awkward. But for the most part, with actually riding like a variety of wheels, it didn't really affect me that much. It only affected me with Venom Magnums, which ended up being way too wide for my deck, uh, the small blind. And yeah, I had to run them flipped. But other than that, it didn't affect my riding experience at all. But I can't see it being an issue for other people. And with the competition offering, by competition, I mean other precision trucks for slalom, offering about 10 millimeters worth of adjustability. I don't see why Bear wouldn't offer that as well. However, I have heard from some manufacturers that an adjustable axle does put a lot of stress on the shoulders of your hanger. So yeah, maybe that was the decision. So right, next thing that I do want to talk about is maybe running these trucks with a higher ride height in the back. The half inch riser actually makes the back truck sit higher than the front truck when you use it. And this gives you a higher ride height in the back. Now, is this a good or a bad thing? I actually really enjoyed riding the small blind setup that way because I felt like I had a little bit less overall grip. I had a little bit more control in the slides and it and I felt like it put my body in a better position. Like 
you know, this could be all anecdotal or subjective or whatever, but I felt a little bit leaned over more on my front truck and in a better position for slides as well. It just felt a lot better. Um, and it improved the riding experience overall, but it did reduce the grip that I was getting from my wheels, uh, from what I was feeling. So I chose to just run them uh, at the same height, which is with a quarter and a one eighth riser. And I felt I was getting the most out of my wheels and really sort of pushing my limits. But for a more forgiving, enjoyable ride, I definitely will be opting to run the half inch riser in the back. So yeah, and I, I invite you guys to experiment with that as well. It can offer a positive riding experience. Right, so last thing I want to talk about is how I have my Smokies set up. So right, so I weigh about 156 pounds or like 71 kilograms. Uh, I had them set up 50 degrees, 20 degrees. Um, bushings, I have 74A, 78A, uh, 97A, 95A cupped washer roadside in the back and big flat normal size washer roadside in the front no washers both side and i really liked setting up setting it up this way i felt like it gave me a little bit more support a little bit more center feel and yeah i could go faster more confidently also in the corners i felt i could be more aggressive with my body positioning with hillside slides and how aggressively i take corners so yeah i really like the way it's set up it's really dialed in for me and you're gonna hopefully be seeing some really great stuff so yeah i set them up on the small blind on the 21 inch wheelbase and yeah that's pretty much it thanks guys for watching the review i think if these trucks sound pretty great to you i recommend you give them a chance i think they're some of the best trucks on the market right now of course they're not perfect no truck is perfect but yeah the real comparison video should drop in a few minutes so yeah that should be up as you are watching this video and yeah thanks for watching big shout out to my patrons i'm able to make videos and content like this thanks to you guys' support thanks to everyone who watches these videos as well thanks to everyone who shares likes all that good stuff and yeah thanks for watching